Okay, <coughs> next we have the um, maintenance quadrant update. Good morning, board members, superintendent, staff, and the, uh, our audience. I'd like to thank you for having us here this morning to uh, go over what has been in place now for one year with the maintenance quadrants. Today I have with me uh, David Van West, who's going to be presenting with me, Jose De La Mora, who will be presenting, Pat O'Toole, who is a uh, maintenance manager also. Patty Turberfill is in Jerusalem on vacation, and we have one vacancy at this point in time. We do have two other maintenance uh, members with us today, Nick Altenhofen and uh, Mike Looper, who have been sitting in from time to time as interim maintenance managers. We do that because we're trying to grow our, management, our managers from within. I'm gonna let uh, David start off with explaining what is a quadrant and how can we have five. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Dave Van Westerheisen. Most people call me Dave Van West for obvious reasons. Um, I'm going to define what a quadrant is. Uh, a quadrant is a team of tradespeople that have specific duties um, and each complete important tasks at the schools to keep them running and safe. There are 15 different trades plus support staff in the quadrants. Uh, we serve approximately 100 sites, including Catalina as well as Camp High Hill. Uh, we use a quadrant system, and yes, there are five quadrants, but I'm going to let Jose explain why there's five. Um, one of the biggest advantages of the quadrant system is there is now a single point of contact for the sites for their maintenance issues. Um, and now I'll let Jose explain why there's five. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jose Delamore. I'm the uh, maintenance manager over quadrant four. And the district is, bro is broken up into four geographical quadrants. Quadrant one is on the northwest part of town. Quadrant two is on the northeast part of town. Quadrant three is on the southwest. And quadrant four is on the southeast. There is a fifth quadrant, and we call this the support quadrant. That includes the one-off trades such as the welder, the sign maker, the window glazers, sheet metal workers, and et cetera. All these employees support the district uh, and all the other quadrants. Each quadrant, with the exception of the fifth quadrant, have an AC, heating, technicians, carpenters, electricians, locksmiths, painters, and building maintenance workers. A fully staffed quadrant will have 19 employees when we get there. I currently have 16 employees um, and three vacancies, but we are actively seeking out and, uh, to fill these vacancies. I'm back up. Uh, the goals for the reorganization, uh, obviously single point of contact for the sites for their maintenance issues. Um, also the quadrant now has ownership of the task from start to finish. Um, there's no more silos. Um, sites don't have to call between shops to see what the status of their projects are. Um, uh, also the, the quadrants allow the staff to become familiar with the sites, making their work a little bit easier. Um, and this team approach uh, provides continuity between the trades, so one task could lead into the other more, efficient, more efficiently and more effectively. Continuous improvement. One of the areas of, uh, that we see continuous improvement is, is communication with all our stakeholders. And that was one of the concerns that we, when we rolled out the quadrant system that we faced, uh, was communication. So this is one of the areas that we seek to continuously improve all communications, again, with all stakeholders. Collaboration. Uh, I recently had a job over at Buffum Elementary School where I had to pull all the uh, playground equipment from there. And the concrete slugs were still embedded in the ground. I didn't have sufficient manpower in my quadrant to get the job done, so I reached out to quadrant two. Uh, that's uh, Patricia Turbyfield's quadrant, and we also reached out to all the other quadrants. It became a collaborative effort between all quadrants to get the job done. Uh, it was actually a sight to see all our tradespeople working together with the heavy equipment 
to get the job done. Um, I wanted to use the word cool, uh, that it was pretty cool, but I wasn't sure if we're still using that word. But it was a sight to see Apparently all we our are. trades. <laughs> okay, All our trades uh, come together in that. Uh, we have approached this reorganization with a mind towards continuous improvement. We recognize that the change process is challenging, but we are assessing our performance, being open to feedback, incorporating lessons learned into future work. We hope to continue on our trajectory. Improvement, we actively, uh, actively seek out feedback from our site and employees. Innovation, we, are able to obtain, we were able to obtain equipment and resources for, to provide equity to the Bixby Yard employees, allowing them to concentrate on their quadrant instead of the back and forth travel to the main yard. Um, work culture, positive feedback. Um, one that's big on positive feedback uh, because I want to let my crew know uh, a job well done. I also relay that information when we get the kudos or the positive feedback from the school sites, our principals, or our plant supervisors. I relay that information to, over to my tradespeople. Uh, I believe positive feedback and, and just positive reinforcement of a job well done goes a long way for our employees. Uh, and then I'll turn it over to Mr. Van West. Mr. Lightyear, I'm sorry. You know, sometimes you just can't get those work orders to come up. <laughs> One of the things that we wanted to show you this morning was where we were with uh, the number of open work orders that were in place when we started this quadrant system in uh, late January, early February of 2018. We had almost 9,000 open work orders. When we took a look at that, and that was after we had gone through and walked sites with site administrators and plant supervisors to verify all the tickets that were open to see what work was done and what work was still open. And the reason we did that is because we realized that there had been work that was done, the efforts had been put out there, the tickets just weren't closed out. So they're sitting in a system, and at one point in time it was up to 22,000 open work orders, and it made absolutely no sense that you could have that in an organization this size and not have anybody calling up on a regular basis that things weren't getting done. Not that we didn't have calls like that, but to that extent. What I wanted to show you is that early on, the uh, Quadrants reached out, they looked at their tickets, and they took a look at all of the tickets that we call the low-hanging fruit. Those tickets that are easily done, that for some people might look like nonsense, but to the sites, they're especially important. So they went out in the early months, and they brought those open work order tickets down to just over 3,000. Then we came to the summer, and what happens in the summer? We have, uh, when the teachers leave, they leave a note with the plant supervisor, those tickets come in, and we have work that comes in. And they did go back up again starting in November, and a lot of that has to do with the uh, Pineapple Express that came through, and came through, and came through, and those roof leaks uh, came up, and they had to drop what they were doing and address those emergency situations. So okay. is it typical for us to have an increase in, um, I guess, uh, work requests in the fall when school is back in, in session? And I know this year has been especially tough with the um, excessive rain and everything, but is that a, a typical um, occurrence as having the increase in the fall? That is a typical occurrence. Sometimes we see it in, in late June, early July. Other times we do see it in the fall. Maybe somebody didn't get a message from a, uh, a teacher prior to, uh, to leaving for the, uh, the summer months. But we do see things when people come back to work that they'd like to have done in their classrooms. That's, that's pretty common. Les, a follow-up to uh, that, that question. I know we're having a lot of repair work done on our schools, air conditioning and other work does that have anything to do with the increased uh, uh, requests that have come in from sites? That, that does have a, a lot to do with the increase of requests that have come in. It is not uncommon for the maintenance staff to go out with the architects and engineers to show them where utilities are located, to go out and do the reviews on submittals, and all of those come in off of a work order through facilities. 
We, uh, we do all the keying for the sites when, when they're, uh, they're going into construction and when they're coming back out of construction. So there is a lot of work that goes into that. The other part of that that goes into it is the fact that the new technology for air conditioning has completely changed. So they're now into a system that they call VRF, variable refrigerant flow. In the old days you had pressure, now you have flow. And the systems do not operate like they used to. So we, we're in a catch-up mode there for a while until we can get all of our employees back out to the uh, manufacturer's trainings to get trained in these units. Training them one time, though, isn't going to do it. Because what happens is you don't work on it on a daily basis. And because of that, you lose some of those skills that you have been trained on. So we will continually uh, be training our employees as we move forward. Thank you. The slide that we have up here talks, uh, shows the uh, open and closed work orders. And again, that spike on the orange in the top is where we took all that low-hanging fruit at the very beginning and how we have gone uh, through the course of the year. You see, as a result, starting in about November, we had that uptick, and a lot of that had to do with the, uh, the rains that came through. But over the course of the year, we had 27,000 uh, service requests that came in, and we closed out over 31,000 as a branch. So moving forward through the year, did we catch up? Yes, we caught up to where we are ahead of what is coming in. You'll never get down to zero. Remember those old commercials for the Maytag repairman? We're never going to be there. But we will be to a place where it is uh, acceptable to sites, and that's where we really need to get. The next slide. Les, before you move on, does the aging of our facilities have anything to do with, with the, uh, with the uh, amount of requests that come in? This has a great deal to do with, with, with the amount of requests that come in. And although we are do, we're going at a, a rocket speed in modernizations, the sites that we haven't got to yet are aging. Uh, I'll give you an example. The track B sites that we have air conditioning at, that air conditioning has been end of life for about five years. And we replace them as they break down. We hate being in breakdown mode, but we, we do that. We have, we have uh, sewer lines that are uh, exploding. We have steam lines for the old boilers. As we go through modernization, those boilers will go away. But right now, we have a lot of uh, infrastructure issues that are going on. And any time we have a little jolt, those pipes underground, which are fragile to begin with, they seem to just want to give up. <laughs> That's another question on this uh, yeah. graph, on the, the, the previous one. So is the difference between the open and closed tickets um, what then remains still open? That, okay. that is correct. Okay. That is so correct. that's roughly a, a few hundred? That is, uh, yes. No, it's, a, it's actually, pardon me? That's by month. Right. For, yes, so by for month. the month of February, let's say right. la last month, February 19, the difference between the open and closed is, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming a couple hundred. It, 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 it's a slight increase to, to, the, to the, number, the total number of open. Oh, got okay. it. Okay. So that's different from the previous graph then, which uh, indicates that in February 19, there's 5,580 open tickets. Th the difference would be added to that 5,500? Right. Okay. Now, what th that is actually, the 5,500 is, is actually the total. What you see there between uh, this graph is the increase, that marginal increase of tickets that came in for that month, the tickets that have been addressed. Okay. So if I'm interpreting this correctly, uh, we're actually above 5,500 open. Tickets if we include the difference between open and closed in February? That's correct. Okay. Les, is it fair to point out, too, not all tickets are equal. Some tickets require a lot more work than others. So uh, this chart kind of hides that fact, doesn't it? That, that is only one way to measure uh, the activities that go on in the branch. The next, this chart here, is a better is is really where we want to get. We want to see that increase in the uh, of getting to a site and addressing a ticket. 
and we have four priorities that we put tickets in when we uh, put them into the system. The first one is priority, and priority is something that happens at a school site. They may be having a walks presentation. They may be ha having some event that is going to come up, and there's a time frame on that that it needs that the request that's coming in needs to be addressed. And what we this sh uh, graph shows us is going across all four of the areas that we. Uh, are measuring, whether it's priority, routine, emergency, or inspections, our response time back to the sites has greatly improved over the course of the past year. And John, you're absolutely correct. Tickets in and of themselves are not equal. And we'd like it to be that the first time a service person goes to a site, a ticket is addressed. Unfortunately, due to the age of the facilities and the the need to special order some of the parts, which are in some cases are obsolete, and you have to go to aftermarket uh, providers to find them, you cannot fix it that first visit. And it's more of a reconnaissance visit than anything else. And that adds to the, uh, the magnitude of the delays to the sites. Uh. Currently, we have 125 field and um, management personnel positions in the maintenance branch. We currently have 15 vacant positions, and there's seven retirements pending. Uh, we are actively attempting to fill these positions as we speak. Um, I have a question about um, filling the positions. Do we give any kind of priority to um, existing staff or somebody who has experience um, before we look outside? We, we don't uh, do internal uh, recruitments only. We're doing dual, dual recruitments. However, the, uh, the two gentlemen that are here today, um, Mike and Nick, are examples of people that are filling interim managers positions so they have an idea of what it is that we're expecting from a maintenance manager and what it's going to take to be successful in, in uh, filling that position. We are going to be working with the personnel commission to do some work on air conditioners, uh, air conditioning employees. We cannot get air conditioning technic technicians. The economy is so good out there right now and none of the school districts are having uh, an opportunity to get those journey level technicians. We're going to come up with a, uh, a system where we have a training program. And I will get into that in more detail when I come to you with my goals, because that's my goal for the year, is to come up with, 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 sub, with a training program. And if it works and we can get it to work, we will uh, probably uh, put it into other trades also. What we want to do is we want to keep the informal, uh, take a look at the informal feedback from sites. I've got 22 sites where we have uh, emails that have gone back to the maintenance managers to go back and thank the staff who have gone out and, uh, and performed the work. We wouldn't have seen that a year ago. It is, is, it is a nice uh, accolade to the, uh, an acknowledgement to the workers that the work is appreciated and that they're doing what the site is, is requesting to have done. We're going to be going out at the, before the end of the year, next in, in May, to go with a uh, stakeholders uh, survey. What we want to do with the stakeholders survey, and they can answer you know, one to five or however we, we, uh, we finally put this together, uh, matrix of what it is that they expect if their maintenance manager has been to their site, if they know who their maintenance manager is, if they feel that their tickets are being addressed in a timely fashion, what they would want differently, if we can provide something differently, and how can we improve the communications with the site. One of the things we did uh, this year when we revamped the work order system is that if Dr. Williams initiates a work order, anytime there's a change in that work order, it will ping you back with an email and tell you what that change is so that people aren't in the dark. Now, the problem with that is sometimes within our own uh, departments, the communication is the worst of anything. And you may not 
be telling your counterpart what that information was that came in. We still have it out there. Anybody can go on to the tickets and look at the tickets to find out the status. But the, uh, we just want the information to be available so that no one is ever in the dark on a request that they've put in. So would a change include an update, like you're waiting for a part, um, that sort of thing? Yes, it would. And hopefully we can get to the point when we're waiting for a part, we can tell a site when we're going to return. Because that doesn't help, that's just waiting for a part in and of itself doesn't give enough information. But it's a start. It was really helpful right now the way you described that last part. Could you walk me through that, that process, like from the initial request to final uh, completion? So if I'm at Stevenson and, I don't know, one of the sinks breaks, mm -hmm. when, you know, what happens to initiate it? And then can you kind of walk me through? Okay. It's completion. Let's say that the, uh, you're at Stevenson and the water is running and nobody can turn it off. Yeah. That ticket would come in as an emergency. Okay. We, would, we would have somebody go out and respond immediately to that ticket and turn the water off. Okay. At that point, that ticket becomes a routine because the emergency in and of itself has been addressed. They will then uh, schedule a time when they come back to the site and do that repair that is required so that that sink can be op operable again. When you do that, the ticket will stay. The number for the ticket will stay the number for the ticket all the way through. All that happens is the, the, uh, the priority changes on the ticket. Every time there's a change, when a, an employee enters a, uh, their hours, when an employee does, puts a note in it, you will be notified if you were the initiator. There's two ways that tickets get uh, put into the system. A site can put a ticket into the system or they can call up 7500 at the maintenance branch and we'll put a ticket into the system for them. If it's an emergency, we always want the site to call 7500 because the system in and of itself only sends the tickets that are generated from the site to us overnight. Mm -hmm. So if you had an emer emergency situation but you put a ticket in and nobody showed up, right. it's, there's a reason they didn't show up, we didn't even, even know. It's not a good excuse, but it's uh, the, the, what we want for emergencies is the, it's the direct call, then we can get somebody out. Got it. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. The next one is we want to go back to our staff. If it wasn't for our staff, we couldn't have even got to closing an additional 4,000 tickets that, uh, over what came in this year. And we want to go back to the staff because we did do a change. And their operations changed, their location of work changed, their methodology of who they reported to changed. It's a lot to take in in a year, especially for some of our folks that have been here for 25, 30 years. But we want to know if they feel supported, if they uh, feel that they have feedback, from, positive feedback from their supervisor, and if um, they have a clear expectation of what is expected of them. Are they treated professionally? And if given an opportunity, what can we do to help them improve their skills? We also want them to, how would they recommend, uh, how, can we, how can we improve communications within our branch and how can we improve communications with the sites? So there's some things that we want to do. These, these surveys, these two surveys, the stakeholder and the staff surveys will go out in May and we'll take a look at those to see what we can do. Because as Jose explained earlier, this is about continuous improvement and you just can't sit back because it will backslide. So we need to make sure that we are there in support of all the uh, sites. So when we talk about stakeholders, are we talking about um, both uh, school site staffs and um, the actual maintenance workers? Y yes, we are. There'll be two separate surveys, and one will go to the, to, to the sites themselves, and the other, other one will go to the, uh, the workers. And one of the things is we'll figure out a way that we can make it a blind survey so people can actually tell us what they really are, are, are believing. Would there be an opportunity for <clears throat> comments if it's a blind survey? There is. There, are, are, there will be an opportunity for comments. Because you just can't ask simple yes or no questions. You have to have some area where the subjective or personal thought goes in, into the, uh, the responses. Les, if I may, 
The 14 years that I spent as a principal at all levels in the Long Beach Unified, maintenance has been superb. A word of caution, some years ago, our district decided to go to five area superintendents and it was flawed. So you might be served well with uh, institutional history to probe that and figure out where the flaws were and what went wrong because this quadrant thing reminds me very much of that. We will do that. And I remember you telling me that when we brought it to you in closed session before we implemented. <laughs> Well, I'm going to give you a little bit of my background. Um, I've worked in the building trades since middle school. I failed to get into medical school and then began to work in the trades full time. Think of all the lives I've saved by not going to medical school. Um, I have a general contractor's license, electrician's license, as well as an air conditioning and heating license. Um, my quadrant is the northwest quadrant, which includes this building. Um, I, the average age of the buildings in my quadrant is over 65 years old. Many of them were track B schools and have air conditions that are at end of life, 25 years and older. Um, in the first year in the quadrant, we were able to close 1,500 backlog tickets in addition to our regular workload in my quadrant. Um, and what I'm working on for the future is training my staff to work more cohesively as a team. And we're going to implement technology such as Chromebooks so they can enter those comments and statuses on the tickets as they work on them. So the staff at the sites is more informed on what's going on with the tickets. Um, a little bit of my, my background. I'm a product of Long Beach Unified School District. I attended Cleveland Elementary School, uh, DeMille Middle School, and Jordan High School. I'm currently working on my 23rd year here with uh, Long Beach Unified. I was a area custodial manager uh, for 21 years of, of those years have been out of the operations branch. I was an area custodial manager for eight years, uh, custodial services inspector for three years. Uh, I was also a high school supervisor at Jordan High School, uh, K-8 supervisor and elementary school supervisor. Before then, I started off as a substitute custodian and I was uh, uh, lucky enough to be hired on by Ms. Ashley when she was a principal at the time. Uh, my quadrant is quadrant four, we're on the south uh, east part of town and our site, school sites are approximately 60 years old and on that side of town what we're currently facing is a lot of plumbing issues. Uh, our buildings are aging, our plumbing is original to the site so that's what we're currently facing. That's one of the battles that we're currently facing in our quadrant. Um, my approach uh, to work is on a team, um, uh, it's, a, it's a team approach. I really focus on team building with my guys and uh, we, we tackle everything that comes up or comes our way as a team approach. We meet every morning to come up with a game plan on what we're gonna do that day and if uh, more than one trade is needed to tackle that one task, we come up with it, we strategize it, and we implement that day. Um, what we're currently celebrating is improved communication with our principals and being the single point of contacts with our principals. Uh, I currently have a great working re relationship with all my principals. Uh, my principals can pick up the phone right now, call me out for a concern. I can be out that very same or the same day or the very next day, go over the concerns, walk the site and come up with a game plan to address their issues. Uh, some of my principals are, are very happy with the service that we're pro currently providing. Um, and another celebration or another uh, topic that we're celebrating is that when we rolled out in the quadrant system, quadrant four had 2,536 work orders in the system. We were able to bring that number down to slightly under 700. And with the rains, the recent rains that we had, that number went back up. So we're slightly under 1,200 at the moment. Um, it's, uh, this task, uh, again, couldn't have been done without the help of my tradesmen or tradespeople. Um, I, I thank them on a regular basis. And again, uh, positive reinforcement. I, I, have, I, I just can't be so thankful enough. Um, What we're currently focusing on is technology in our quadrants. 
uh, we have introduced the Chromebooks to our staff. Uh, I have about 50% of my staff members or my tradespeople with the cap capability of having Chromebook access or having Chromebooks. They go out to the school site, they tap onto the school site's Wi-Fi, they can pull all the tickets that they currently have in the system assigned to them to that particular site. Uh, the benefit to having Chromebooks is that they can add pictures, add comments, and if we're waiting on a part, like Mr. Leahy mentioned, uh, we can add that and keep the school sites informed. Uh, again, it's a great benefit. If it's a, a trade or a job that requires multi-trades, one, uh, let's say if it requires a plumber, a carpenter, and a painter, once the plumber is done, he can state that it's ready for the next task. So the other uh, tech that's assigned to that ticket knows that they're up. So instead of having that gap or that uh, in communication, we're all kept in the loop. So this is one of the benefits to our Chromebook technology. And again, I have 50% of my staff currently with this technology. We have four more Chromebooks per quadrant coming up in the near future, but we hope to have all of our techs uh, with this Chromebook technology by the summertime. The VAN program. Uh, the VAN program, formerly known as the trailer program, uh, we have a traveling van that consists of one site painter, one site building maintenance worker, and the scope of their work is to replace casters, replace, uh, replace uh, wheels on carts, repair or replace ceiling tiles. This is one of the things that we do on a regular basis, replace stained or ceiling tiles. This is uh, majority of the scope of the work. Uh, install, repair, re dispensers, soap, towel, tissue dispensers, and hang pictures, et cetera. Uh, we currently run two different programs. Over at the Bixby Yard, we run one prolonged uh, visit once per year. Over on the main yard, they're running two visits, two shortened visits per year. At the end of this year, based on the survey results, we will go back and visit and we'll see what our customer satisfaction is. If our customer satisfaction is based on one prolonged stay or two shortened stays, then we'll be, we will roll it out next year. Uh, again, what we're shooting for is customer satisfaction. Okay. Thank you. Cross. Quadrant collaboration, that was a tough one for me to practice. Uh, this is the cornerstone of, of the quadrant system. Um, because we're doing more with less, less personnel, less equipment, collaboration is mandatory. Um, often resources such as backhoes, skid loaders, and um, lifts aren't present in all the quadrants, so we have to collaborate to share those resources. Um, not all quadrants have a Class A driver that's able to move our heavy equipment from site to site. So we have to rely on other quadrants uh, for their Class A drivers often. Um, some personnel have specialized training and experience, such as our antiquated analog clock and bell systems. Those technicians that have that experience help train the ones that do not. Um, and as Jose mentioned with Buffum, with a large project, we generally collaborate together to solve those issues with more resources, such as personnel and equipment. So we have some challenges. The challenges are not, uh, can all be addressed, and we're working on that as, as I speak. Staffing, we have employees coming in now. Uh, we have in, uh, interviews going on. We have some, the maintenance managers were tested on Monday. Today we are uh, testing for a maintenance director. Boy, will I be glad to see that day. Uh, we have a, uh, the business services uh, director is being uh, tested uh, tomorrow, and the operations director, I think you all know that Frank Gutierrez is going to retire in June, is being uh, tested on, uh, on Friday. We have BMWs coming in, we have carpenters coming in, we have the electricians coming in. The one hole that we, we still have is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. And uh, that is going to involve ongoing training and that training is going to, uh, we'll come up with the plan to see if we can do this in-house and, and grow our own people for the future. 
technology. Jose mentioned in the fact that the Chromebooks, we have the Chromebooks rolling out. We also know the Chromebooks that we have given out so far that no one's ever opened. And we bring those people back in every six weeks when we get another group of 20 Chromebooks to come in to put them through the training. It's kind of the fear. Remember when uh, computers first came out and people had a keyboard? They looked at it differently than a typewriter. And it wasn't. The fear of, of, of the, uh, these Chromebooks is, it does, doesn't have to exist. We just have to get our people used to what this technology is. And we will be continuing to, uh, to seek improvement from ourselves so that we can share with our employees and we can take it back to the staff. That's, that's our presentation for today. And if you have any questions. Okay, any, go ahead. Les, uh, for all the years that we've been getting reports on the maintenance uh, uh, program, and for all the information that you've been providing over time, I think this is one of the few times where I've gotten a, a very good overview of the situations that you're having to deal with in terms of maintenance. So I wanted to thank you and members of your staff for the information this morning about providing a lot of clarity and clarification to some of the things that, that transpire within the maintenance area. It's, uh, I know we've listened to a lot of folks who just pigeonholed us and said, you know, we've got problems over here and problems over there. But I think this overview has really helped me to get a better understanding of the, the, major, uh, uh, the, the, the major pieces that are a part of the maintenance program. And the fact that you are looking at how you can continuously improve, uh, bring in technology, uh, and what maintenance actually means to our district. Uh, the impact of maintenance on uh, our academic programs and so forth and so on. Uh, it's been very helpful and I appreciate it. Thank you. And you mentioned um, bringing forward your goals um, in the future. Um, I would also like to suggest a cost analysis of um, the maintenance program from before we went to this quadrant system um, a year ago, and I know that the um, results are very uh, encouraging, especially with the open tickets and everything. It looks like there are um, dramatic um, decreases in the amount of time, uh, or response time, that sort of thing, but I'm wondering how cost effective it is to have the um, quadrants, and I don't know if you have that information right now. I don't want to blindside you with that, but it may be in the future when you bring the goals, bring forward your goals, we can talk about that as well. I can address that a little bit for you right now. We all work for the same gentleman. And when I take the, when we took the project to have Yumi and, and Chris look at this, it always has to be net zero or better. You don't get an increase just because you're making a change. And it, it, it was better than net zero. We, there was there was some savings to be uh, had by going to to this method. That wasn't the overall goal. The overall goal, however, was to make the service better to the sites. Thank you, well, Les. Thank you very much. Uh, as Dr. Williams and I know, as we age, we need more maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> so you will always find the board supportive of maintenance needs. That's for sure. Yeah, Les. A, a, a couple questions uh, for me, and then. Um, uh, I guess it's a request. Um, so one of the things that's impressed me the most uh, in my uh, opportunities to visit facilities and schools for the first time is uh, considering the age of many of our buildings, just how good our, our facilities and, and, and schools look, right? Just mm -hmm. from an aesthetic uh, perspective, you know, and I have a, a, a student in the district as well. So when we visit uh, schools, uh, that's one of the things that impresses her uh, uh, as well. Um, and considering that Mr. Meyer brought up that not all tickets are equal, uh, what are our goals, uh, Les, in terms of, you know, we're still ongoing, going to continue to receive tickets. There may be a, still a, a gap, even if it's slight, between the tickets that are closed and the new tickets. And then we have sort of the rollover uh, mm -hmm. open tickets. So if, do we have goals around 
uh, sort of lowering that 55, 100, and if so, what, what are they? What conversations have you and your team had around those? We'd like to see it down somewhere between, under 4,000 tickets for the, for, the, for the district. We'd also like to um, make it so we don't hold tickets just because we, we can't do the job. Right. So if we know that we are never going to have the internal resources to do the job, right. we need to get a contractor to come in and, and, and do that work. That was a lot of what happened before. Tickets were just held in abeyance and they never got addressed. So we don't do that now. We ask on, on almost a weekly basis, what tickets do you have that have come in that you can't do? I have uh, one trade right now that I'm meeting with tomorrow morning that has a number of tickets that we need to contract out. The gentleman has finally come to the realization, I just cannot do this. So it, it and sometimes that's what it takes. You, you, you want that, those, those workers' input that even if I brought everybody in the trades mm -hmm. together, we don't have that resource to, mm -hmm. to do that work. Okay. You know, probably the worst thing that ever happened to maintenance and construction was HGTV. HGTV <laughs> makes it so that everything's done in a half hour, and that is just not the reality of life. I mean, we can't do everything ourselves <laughs> either, Les. Um, thanks, uh, Les. My second question is around equipment, uh, and you know, I'd be happy to hear from anyone on your team about this. So, um, President Craighead and I got a chance to visit uh, one of the yards a few months ago, and one of the things that we noticed, um, and correct me if I'm wrong if this is a fair assessment uh, or not, is um, a lot of either equipment that wasn't being used because of it needed to be, to be repaired, uh, equipment that was either like maybe too old, so it was obsolete, uh, and or insufficient uh, equipment. You know, where are we at in terms of our equipment sort of needs and, you know, sort of status update on, on our equipment? We have a wonderful transportation yard, and if there's equipment that needs service, all we need to do is, is be told that it needs service. And that may be a communication issue. I'll have the maintenance managers reach out to the employees just to make sure if we have anything like that. I wouldn't think that an employee would let a piece of equipment sit that wasn't operable, but we don't. We want to take care of that. Sure. If we have something that's obsolete, it's probably waiting for something to, to, be, uh, to be salvaged so that we can get a new piece of equipment in. Okay. We concentrated when we went into the quadrants we, we did concentrate when we went into the, uh, the quadrant system on getting parity between the two yards mm -hmm. where they had the sewer snakes, where they had the electrical uh, uh, testing equipment, where they had the things that they needed so that they weren't, as Jose said, running back and forth. Right. And Jose thinks he has some information that he'd like to add on this. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mr. Benitez, on that, um, we did survey out uh, obsolete pieces of equipment over from the Bixby yard. Okay. Uh, we bought new equipment. Uh, we brought in uh, new drill presses. That was one of the pieces yeah. of equipment that was obsolete. So transportation has picked up that equipment, removed it from our shop, and we do have a brand new drill press. We also have uh, the uh, purchased concrete saws, concrete mixers, uh, key stampers, uh, best keyway. Uh, uh, we also purchased uh, band saws with the fences. And, and the, we also actually made workstations. So we are currently, it's still ongoing. Mm -hmm. uh, the work isn't complete just yet, but it's still, um, we are in the process of nearing completion and we have trade workstations. So each trade member has a workstation that they can conduct work out of. And we did get them anti-fatigue mats also. And we purchased uh, uh, shelving, also purchased shelving to create wall space and additional, get things off the ground. Sure. We also build 20 feet of extra wall space on one side to accommodate the, uh, the new equipment that we purchased and on the other end to accommodate the, uh, the uh, shelving system that we purchased. Great. So electrical went in. Um, we are not 100% functional where we want to be, mm -hmm. but our guys can conduct work uh, more freely in there. There Great. is definitely more space. Awesome. So I'm hoping to have that completed with uh, uh, one of my guys has been uh, spearheading this uh, very, very great asset. Uh, and we hope to have it completed by summer's time or summertime. Okay. So just so, a timeline. Thank you. So to quote you, cool. 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> I have a little to add to that. Some, sometimes the equipment doesn't get a lot of uses. We have a, a skip loader in the yard that we use to remove debris out of our bunkers. That's where we dump in transit to the dump. Uh, that unit is from 1981, but it has very low hours on it because it doesn't travel to the sites with us. It's used infrequently at the yard to, to load um, dump trucks. So it may look obsolete, but it, it, it is, it's an older vehicle that still operates. The only downside to that is now it's difficult to get parts for a truck that's, sure. or a tractor that's 35 years old. So when it does go down, it goes down for a while so they can get the parts. That's Thank you. Go ahead, Jeff. No, I was just going to ask for, um, but I'll, I'll go ahead. No, go ahead. So um, I think it would be also good um, if, if it's not, uh, I guess if it's, if it's not viable, I totally understand, to get a sense of um, so where the tickets are coming in from by quadrant, uh, mm -hmm. both for the existing open tickets, mm -hmm. but also just to get a sense of, uh, you know, you mentioned age of the buildings has a big factor, sort of where our needs are district uh, wide and sort of the kinds of uh, 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 requests uh, that we're getting would be good for us to have a sense of, you know, are there, you know, more crisis type tickets, emergencies in certain uh, quadrants or school, school sites versus just ongoing uh, sort of maintenance. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, is that something that oh, we yeah. can do? Oh, okay. yeah. That, 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 that can be done. We, we, we do have that and we can make that available. We'll yeah. get it to the superintendent's yeah. office. Sure. I just want to commend uh, you know, the entire department, Les, and, and Everyone, because there are when you go through change, there are two types of change: technical change, which is the easy stuff. That's the low-hanging fruit. You know, <coughs> check the box; it's done. That's the easy part. The adaptive change is the hard part. And adaptive change is really, really hard for anybody. As educators, we're supposed to be lifelong learners, and we probably are the worst examples of that at times. So um, when you go through a change process like this, and people are used to a certain uh, way. That adaptive change is what gets, um, can hold things back. And I want to commend you and your team because you're looking at feedback from the partners. You're talking about um, the continuous improvement cycle, the PDSA, um, uh, used adjust, we use act. Uh, it's perfect because that's what we want to see both on both sides of the house, you know, and so on. One thing I'm always proud about Long Beach Unified is that there truly is an integration between um, the instructional side of the house and the non-instructional side of the house. And that's important because we're all here to support the same cause. So I want to commend everyone for that. And I know what it's like when you have all these tickets and the way you're coming to. So I'm just um, saying, and, and Dr. I mean, Mr. Myers is right, when we went to um, the five superintendents years ago, this is back in 1992, uh, no, yeah, 92. It was, yeah, maybe 90, I forget, I'm getting old. So, so the, uh, the, the problem back then was it was not um, collaborative and it was not uh, as seen as a system. It truly was seen as five systems. To the difference today, it's one system. So when you're looking at the quadrants, I know you guys are looking at that. Um, and we'll bring back to the board the feedback that you guys get from your surveys. And we're always here to help and support because um, we do have a great school system with great kids and great employees and everyone. Um, but I just encourage people on both sides of the house, whether it's classified or certificate, embrace the change. It, it, it's okay to take a risk. It's okay to fail because that's the greatest life experience. That's how we discovered penicillin. Um, and we need to go forth and help one another. So good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Les. Les, you're a good guy and you do a great job, but I like to tease you. Is it really true we still just have one welder for this district? Uh, you'll have zero welders in about oh, seven no. weeks. No, but, yeah, yeah, but that would be true. We have one welder, we have one fence erector, we have one plasterer, we have one sign maker. How do you get by with that? One asphalt worker. We, we, a, there's, there's a couple of these people that you actually see perspiration on in the summer. Okay. <laughs> they, have, they, they have a lot of work that's out there, and, some, and uh, a lot of the work is, uh, takes more than just them, and some of the work gets delayed in that Quadrant 5, unfortunately. We have BMWs that are coming in, uh, building maintenance workers, which are entry-level <coughs> uh, people that are coming in. And they'll be helping the welder, the fence erector, the, the plaster, and so forth, because it, some of these jobs do take more than one person. That's how they have it. We have the entry-level people assisting. Thanks.
Less, Mr. Meyer just sparked another question uh, in me. So uh, I know that President Craig had uh, mentioned um, cost analysis, right? And mm -hmm. I, I love your answer, right? It's a zero sum <laughs> game at the end of the day. But uh, I think it's also important to make us aware, right, that if there are urgent needs uh, for us to consider in terms of, you, you know, our superintendent's not going to like this, but additional resources that may be needed. Uh, to cut down on those, uh, you know, number of tickets, especially the urgent uh, ones, uh, then it's important for us to know that uh, as well. We will, we will do that. I always am a little bit different in how I look at the district than, than uh, my boss does. Her, her job is truly to make sure that the physical health of the district is always intact. My job is to make sure the operational health of the district is intact. They don't always mesh. We work it out, but they don't always mesh. So, Les, we're going to be in, in a committee meeting uh, this afternoon, so we can talk about that. In the <laughs> and and as, as the superintendent would always say, uh, you have to rob Peter to pay Paul, so you, something yes. else goes to pay for one yeah. other thing. So it's all good. At the very least, it's good to know. It's good to know. Uh, right. it's, it's all good to, good to know. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Les. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you to you and your team. Um, we will need to take a break. Um, where did Ray go? I know, oh, is 10 minutes going to be sufficient? Okay, so we will uh, take a break until 10.20.